You say you are the latest president in town. Well, not just the latest president, but I'm the most important person in Ghana today. Really? Hello and welcome to another edition of Sports Check with me, Perez as welcome. Today I'm speaking to a man who has transitioned from sports journalism to sports administration. He's doing incredibly well. He's currently the Vice President of the World Arm Wrestling Federation, the President of the African Arm Wrestling Federation, and the President of the Ghana Arm Wrestling Federation. Charles Osiercibe is my guest on today's edition of Sports Check. And once we come back from this break, we start a conversation on arm wrestling. Welcome back from the break. Today I'm speaking to Mr. Charles Osiyasi, the Vice President of the World Arm Wrestling Federation and the President of the African Arm Wrestling Federation. Sir Charles, congrats. Thank you very much. You say you are the latest president in town. Well, not just the latest president, but I'm the most important person in Ghana today. Really? By virtue of the fact that I am the only Ghanaian who serves as Vice President on a global uh, federation and the fact that I'm the president for Africa and Wrestling Federation I feel that I'm the most important person today in Ghana and um, I expect Ghanaians to take advantage of my new community I expect Ghanaians to appreciate that and give me that support that I need to bring glory to Ghana I need to work to bring glory to Ghana do you think people recognize what you've achieved as I mean, you are tagging yourself as the most important Ghanaian now. Do you think people recognize what you've achieved you know, within this period? Well, people do appreciate uh, what has happened in the last few days. People do call to congratulate. But um, I don't think they have paid attention to the fact that I am the most important Ghanaian today. Um, about some few days ago, um, an elderly person called me and drew my attention to the fact that he thinks I'm the most important Ghanaian today and, uh, and that I, I need that attention, I need that support, I need that guidance. But um, we, we have done this with little or no support. So we are not discouraged. We, we will continue to build that sports brand that has brought us this far would continue to give hope to people, would continue to encourage people to play sports. This is my passion and this is me. So nothing discourages me. But what are some of the opportunities? I mean, being the most important Ghana obviously means that there are some leverage, there are some opportunities that Ghana as a country or even Ghanaian businesses or sports people or you know, academics can get from you know, your accomplishment. What are some of the opportunities that your ascension to the throne of maybe the vice president of the world arm wrestling federation brings to the country well um, I, i'm sure people don't understand what networking means if we do appreciate what networking means then i feel this is the time people must run to president charles or CACB. the simple reason is that um, i have a bigger constituency today both continental and global um, I tell businessmen that you want to do business in Turkey, Russia, USA, and stuff. Unfortunately, you have no contacts. Because of my network, I should be able to link you. You want to get in touch or do some business in Cameroon, you know, in Nigeria, in Senegal. You have no contacts. Because of my constituency, I should be able to call somebody in these countries. Uh, the other way around, people want to do business in Ghana. I'm sure I will be the link because if people want to do oil business, banking, pharmaceutical and stuff, and they do not have contacts in this country because I travel around, because I engage, I will become the link person. It is why I feel that people should take advantage of the new opportunity or opportunities coming to Ghana by virtue of the fact that I have a new constituency so that we can link businesses and individuals. People just don't understand 
what networking is. People also don't understand what sports can do. We have often said that sports is tourism, sports is business, sports creates employment. How do we connect? How do we actualize these things? And these are some of the ways to, you know, actualize them. Yeah, we'll come to your plans for the, for the sport, but on your personal level, what are some of the things that you have in, in mind to do to help the country, basically? Use your connections, use your contacts to help the country, are we asked, are, are, apart from sports? As I sit here, I'm supposed to travel to about nine countries before October. Unfortunately, there is no support. Africa I'm wrestling has no money, so it has to come from my pocket. Ghana I'm wrestling, there's no money. It has to come from my pocket. Why am I traveling? I need to go around and patch up differences. I need to build families. I need to build bonds. As we speak, in 2023, Ghana will be hosting the Africa Games. Arm wrestling is supposed to feature prominently. I need to travel around and be an ambassador for the sport, an ambassador for the Africa Games. It is where I have to travel, unfortunately. Um, so, OCSB has brought this. OCSB must do it, but personally, I feel that this is the time OCSB should become an ambassador for Ghana. I mean, if you mention arm wrestling, or if we go to any global event, and I am introduced, I am introduced as a Ghanaian. Yes. So it is, it is important that uh, Ghana sees it this way, so that as I move, I confidently move as an ambassador of the country, so I'll be able to connect. If there's any good thing somewhere, if I see, I'll say, look, bring it to Ghana. You know, now let's come to the sports. I mean, Ghana, I'm wrestling president, Africa, I'm wrestling president, and now the world vice, you know, you are the vice at the world level. At the world level, what are some of the things that you are going to introduce to, you know, propel the growth of the sports at, that, at the global level? Um, the six things I told Congress or the delegates that I will do, the reason for which they voted for me. I remember uh, some few years ago, about three years ago, I started engaging the Board of Africa and Wrestling and the general family that, look, Ghana is going to host the Africa Games. We need to push and make sure that Ghana is, um, arm wrestling becomes part of the games. Some thought I was joking, but we did some good work. We had a quality pre presentation. We convinced the committee that worked on the sports code and arm wrestling was in there. Beyond that, I'd also said that uh, we do not even have $1 in the coffers of Africa arm wrestling. I would push, I would fight to create content once I create content, it attracts more viewership or following. Yes. Once that happens, you are able, it attracts sponsorship. So we must find money. How do we find it? If we don't create content, we can't make money. So I want to create content. I have told them, currently, I've zoned Africa into five. Okay. So there will be competitions in all the regions. Aside the competitions in the regions, I have ordered that every country mandatorily must have a national championship. I have also said that every country before the end of the year should begin to form clubs. Once we get these things done, it will encourage participation. It will get attraction. Sponsorship will come in. I've said that I'm going to look for sponsorship for Africa Arm Wrestling. I've said that I'm going to put Africa Arm Wrestling on TV. It is why it is not getting popular. Sure. Certain sporting disciplines have come up and they are gaining mileage on TV. Arm Wrestling is easy to play. It's less expensive. The only way we can make it a sport of choice is to put it on TV. I've said that I am going to you know, build capacities. We will train our referees. We have something we call 
the training of the trainer program. We train our referees. We train our coaches to all, sorry to also train a number of athletes to be able to play. We want to train administrators because you 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 reckon that my background as a marketing person and as an events person, I am able to create content. I feel that we should teach the whole of Africa how to package arm wrestling. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Charles. So, yes, we are going for a short break. When we come back, we are going to talk a bit more on arm wrestling as well as athletics. This is Sports Check. My name is Perez as well. Welcome back from the break. This is Sports Check. I'm Perez as well. Called. Today, I'm speaking to the man who tags himself as the most important Ghanaian right now. We've done a lot about the you know, world arm wrestling. We've done Africa. Now, let's come to Ghana, the place where you saw you saw the seed and now it seems to be reaping the benefits at the global level. I have been following arm wrestling for a while now. And to be honest, I'm really, really impressed from where you took it to where it is now. What has been the motivation for you? The motivation? So I, I served um, Ghana basketball under Peter Podogbe. I served Ghana athletics under Mr. N.A. Ajintete. I served Ghana boxing under Moses Fuamonin. I served Ghana weightlifting under Benno Nomensa. And um, my background was event. So it got to a point. I asked myself, how can you influence the change you always advocate for. It's not just about sitting on radio and TV and then preaching and advocacy. Sometimes you must, you know, put your hands to it. A number of ideas came into mind, but I picked up arm wrestling. And, you know, people can confirm that we have done some good work within the period. Gradually, we are becoming a sport of choice. Gradually, Ghanaians are loving their traditional sport. So uh, the motivation is the fact that I wanted to influence a certain change. The motivation is the fact that I wanted people to know that, look, this is the way to go. And arm wrestling has shown the way. So um, I am motivated by the agenda to make things better, the agenda to set records straight, the agenda to have a benchmark. Primarily, I'm motivated by the young men and women who have decided to play the sport of arm wrestling. Sometimes it gets to a point you want to give up because you have invested so much, because um, it is difficult to raise money. But you look at these young men and women and you know, you cannot leave them halfway. You need to continue to fight for them. You need to continue to push so that, you know, uh, what they have decided to do, they would be able to, you know, they would realize uh, their dreams of playing arm wrestling. So the motivation comes from them. The motivation also comes from trying to set standards. And um, I know that we have achieved what we wanted to do. People are happy playing arm wrestling, even though uh, it, it doesn't bring so much into their pockets, but people are also happy that today we are serving the global body and we will be able to influence change. You know, you, you spoke about the pullers and on some of the events that I've attended, you always, at the end of the program, you know, make an uh, announcement and appeal to the corporate world or the various government agencies to recruit some of these things. How difficult is it to manage a group of people who are heavily talented, but for some reasons do not have the job that will feed them and make sure that at least they have some life well sports is a job sports creates employment that's why we feel that people must uh, not just take advantage of them but people must you know associate themselves with these uh, sports talents i've said that the young guys who play arm wrestling are brilliant they are smart they're strong 
and they are fit for any job in this country. Fortunately, we, we, we coach them. We have decided to be their coaches. So apart from the jobs they do, we coach them to be able to manage their brands and to even be able to become brand ambassadors for products. And um, by the grace of God, a few of them have begun representing brands. A few of them have gotten some deals out of playing arm wrestling. But we're saying that corporate Ghana should employ them. Corporate Ghana, remember, if you employ them, it's an investment into arm wrestling. Because, I mean, you would have reasons for which you want to employ a puller. You would have reasons for which you want to have a relationship with, a, with an arm wrestler. What we are saying is that invest in them. Because if you invest in Ezwa and he becomes a world champion, he goes with your brand. Sure. If you invest in Charles Osesibi and Charles Osesibi becomes the vice president or president for Africa, he goes with your brand. That's why we're encouraging corporate Ghana. Because people find it so uh, 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 elated to have an association. Oh, did I use my brother or friend? Uh, Asamojan is my friend. Joshua Clote is my friend. That alone. Why? Because these guys have become public personalities or state icons. That's why they want to have an association. Don't wait for these guys to be super big. Otherwise, you pay more. I feel this is the time where brands and corporate Ghana can grow with my talented and strong uh, uh, arm wrestlers. It is important to have that association. So, so if a brand wants to invest in one athlete, pick him from the bottom and take him to the world level, any idea how much it will cost such a brand? Well, let's um, look at the model of Nigeria. Recently, Nigeria went to the Commonwealth Games. <clears throat> And the whole of West Africa or Africa is praising Nigeria for, you know, the good work they have done. How did they do it? They got government and corporate institutions to manage or support individual athletes. So corporate institutions were paying uh, between $10,000 and $20,000 a month towards the, the training of one athlete. I'm saying that if you want, sorry. If you want to invest in one puller, you can invest about, you know, $30,000 a year and you would get that athlete at that level. 30000 is good money yeah. to get the athlete to train, to get the athlete to uh, eat the right food, to get the athlete to use the right equipment. And the, that athlete will get to the top and probably become a quality brand ambassador for your businesses. It is important Ghanaians consider this and invest in these athletes. I mean, you've been doing this for years. What has been your, the highlights of your quote-unquote arm wrestling career? Um, so normally when these young men and women go to the championship and they win medals, it makes me happy. But the biggest, Today are just two. One, fighting to make arm wrestling a sports code for the Africa Games, for me, is the biggest highlight. Arm wrestling is now part of the Africa Games. And so long as I continue to be the president for the Arm Wrestling Federation of Africa, we would work hard to maintain our status as part of the Africa Games. The second, somebody, you know, people may think, but that is personal. The fact that I have become uh, the president for Africa and the vice president of the world. But frankly, the fact that we're playing in the Africa Games is the biggest highlight since I started doing arm wrestling. And what has been most challenging? The day that you were like, challenged, uh, I want to give up. Oh, it's happened severally. When you need money, to get things done and you're unable to raise resources. Uh, sometimes you want to give up, but um, at this point where I have gotten to, um, the pullers in Ghana and Africa are my priority. If I give up, I, the, the, the future and the hope 
of a number of athletes is dashed or dwindled. So I have no option but to hold on to this and work harder than what I have done in the past. Now, like, we're going to talk a bit of athletics. We've done a lot of <coughs> arm wrestling now. He's the vice, a vice, I think, the second vice president of the Ghana Athletes Association. We went for the Commonwealth Games with over 100 athletes and we came back with five medals. I mean, what do you make of our performance in Birmingham? Well, um, our performance is as a result of what we invested. I often say that if you invest X, you won't get Y, you'll get X. Sure. So because we didn't pay attention to the Commonwealth Games, just as we've done to previous international games, um, we, we didn't get what other countries were able to achieve. But personally, based on what we invested and what we had, I think that we, we overachieved. Wow. And, and kudos to the Ghana Boxing Authority and uh, the Amateur Boxing, yeah, Ghana Amateur Boxing Federation, and then uh, my own Ghana Athletics Federation. I feel that we have overachieved based on what we invested. Commonwealth Games performance, I don't expect anybody to condemn any athlete or any federation. We have overachieved. I, I, I've always had the view that you guys at the Ghana Athletes Association are either misunderstood or you don't tell your story now because we now celebrate the likes of Azamati, Joe Paul and other. But a lot of the work to get these guys to the other part of the world where they are now, say, global stars, were done by the GAA. What's the problem? Is it that you don't communicate well to the public or...? Uh, it is time that we invest in other sporting disciplines because football is not sports. I do not see any sportsman in Ghana today who does so well than Azamati, Joe Paul Amwa, or Deborah Aqua. I, 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 I stand for correction, but not even a footballer. Nobody. As far as performance is concerned. Because these guys meet all the best guys globally. And they are able to match them. Yeah. So what are we talking about? Y you mentioned if, if we go to Commonwealth Games and Joe Paul Amois wins bronze with all the top athletes w within the Commonwealth Nations, you don't think he stands taller than all the footballers who mention their names in this country? If uh, Deborah Aqua wins bronze at the Commonwealth level, you don't think uh, she, should, she should better be taken care of than, you know, all these um, sports personalities we talk about? It's just unfortunate. Maybe some quality packaging should be done. Maybe Ghanaians must have a different orientation. Sports is not football. We create the impression that if you don't play football, then you cannot do sports. Please. The mother of all sports is athletics. And I feel that it is important people begin to pay attention to athletics, boxing, badminton, tennis, table tennis, taekwondo, and all. Because these sporting disciplines we do not respect are the same disciplines that win medals for Ghana during international competitions. Because you say both. Manny Pacman or even Anthony Joshua in boxing, Serena Williams in um, tennis, uh, Michael Phelps in swimming, they are net worth alone. Yeah. It's so huge. Sure. And I say that if we understand that sports is business, we will invest in athletes so that we'll be able to get the likes of uh, Usain Bolt, Manny Pacman, and the rest in this country. Because if they want to keep their net worth in Ghana here, we will not run to IMF for loans. Usain Bolt is net worth over 300 million. Serena Williams over 400 million dollars. Name them, Tiger Woods and the rest. Assuming we have such personalities in Ghana, we will not run to IMF for loans. <laughs> so I want to challenge the businessmen in this country. 
I want to challenge government. Invest in sports. Invest in sports athletes. Invest in sports equipment. And we will reap big. Sure. The sports economy can be equal to or bigger than any other sector of the economy. Look at what football can do. Assuming Ghana decides to host Africa Cup of Nations, you have no idea the boost this will bring to the economy. Assuming Ghana decides to host World Athletics Championship or World uh, Arm Wrestling Championship, you have no idea. Tourism. Because remember, if we are hosting World Championship, the airline business will be boosted. In fact, transport business. It includes airline and normal transport. Sure. Ground transport, hotels, people who deal in replica stuff. Tourism. Tour a lot of things. Yeah. Why can't we consider these things? On that spot, you know, let's veer into a part that we are going to the World Cup in Qatar. We, return. we missed out on the 2018 edition. We are back now. Uh, what do you make of our chances? I mean, vis -a -vis with all the players we have and all the issues at the Black Stars. I just wish... Blacks as well. Um, I pray they're able to perform. If they're unable to perform, I won't begrudge them. I have said that we had no business pressing the panic button. What we need to do, and I, I repeat, what we need to do, we should begin a team building process. It's not, we shouldn't just be results oriented. We should understand that there are cycles in football. Our peak has dwindled. The performance has dwindled. It is a time for us to rebuild another generation of the Black Stars. The current generation is over pampered. The current generation have nothing to offer. But there are a few young guys in the team. Do you think that's Let's keep the squad and give them matches. Let's give them time. Even if they go to the World Cup and they don't perform, we know that it's a work in progress. Do you think the solution to the problems you listed lies in you know, bringing guys from abroad, Ghanaians born abroad, and make, integrating them into the team? Well, um, it's a continental or it's a global platform. And what is important is that we don't go to the global platform to disgrace ourselves. Assuming we don't have these guys then would have made do with what we have but once you're going to the global platform and you're investing so much i mean i i see nothing wrong if perez uh in in norway you know uh with norwegian or Ghanaian parents can play better than charles or ccb who was involved in the qualifiers i i see okay. nothing wrong the most important thing is the impression out there. So any quality Ghanaian player anywhere who can give us that A performance, emphasis on A performance, I see nothing wrong if such a person is invited or decides to switch nationality. But we must understand that it is work in progress. We should begin to build a new team. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles. Oh, yes, but we have been speaking to the president of the African Arm Wrestling Federation, the vice president of the World Arm Wrestling Federation, and the president of the Ghana Arm Wrestling Federation, Mr. Charles Osiyasi, a renowned journalist, one who created the path and led the, you know, the road for some of us. He's been our guest. This is Sports Check. My name is Perez Ezwakao. So come here with another edition. Yeah,